to the final five competitors. And they'll be shooting for the $200,000 grand prize. Are you ready to meet the final five? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Well, here they are. Introducing first, he's an angler with three top 10 finishes on the Everstart Tour. This is his first time in the top five on the Walmart FLW Tour. Let's meet him now. My name is Mark Pack. I'm from Minneola, Texas. I would dedicate tomorrow to my wife and my two boys because they stand behind me everything I do in fishing, and they're just always there for me. My chances tomorrow, I would think, as good as anybody's. Uh, mainly, a lot of people are starting to run out of fish, and it's mainly you have to try to catch a small limit of spots and just trying to catch two to three good smallmouth, uh, just going down the bank trying to find one that'll lock on and one that you can catch. Ladies and gentlemen, weighing in with a three-day total of 33 pounds, three ounces from Mineola, Texas, here is Mark the Pac-Man And our next finalist, he's making his third top five appearance on the Walmart FLW Tour. He's the 1998 Walmart Open champion here on Beaver Lake. Let's meet him. My name is Gerald Swindle. I'm from Warrior, Alabama, and I'm age 31. I dedicate tomorrow to my uncle Eugene. It's my mom's brother, and uh, we found out two weeks ago that he was dying of terminally ill cancer, and he will not live. Uh, another month or two, and he's just a fishing fanatic. He's made a vow that he's going to try to fish every day of his life. If I had to give it up for him tomorrow, I'd do it. He's weighing in with a 34-pound, 14-ounce total after three days. He's the warrior from Warrior, Alabama, Gerald the G-Man Swindle. And next up in the final five, a man with four top ten finishes on the Walmart BFL series. This is his first time as a top five finalist on the Walmart FLW Tour. Let's bring him on. Hi, my name is Wesley Strader. I'm from Spring City, Tennessee. My career is hopefully on the rise. Right now, I'm doing pretty good. Recently come in second at the ever start at uh, Sam Rayburn. I think my chances tomorrow are real good. I'm catching a limit of spots, you know, fairly quick at 20, 30, 40 minutes. I catch a limit of spots, and then from there, I pretty much get my confidence, not wanting to run around and, uh, you know, get my head down straight and, you know, get my head on level and try to call them out with largemouth, and that just gets me settled down. He weighs in with 32 pounds and nine ounces after three days. Here is the pride of Spring City, Tennessee, ladies and gentlemen, Wesley. Sweet Strader! <laughs> and our next top five finalist is a two-time Walmart FLW Tour Angler of the Year, and he's been featured on Kellogg's Cereal Boxes. This will be his fifth top five appearance on the tour. He's a two-time tour champion, including the 1999 Walmart Open. Here he is. My name is Clark Wendland. I'm from Cedar Park, Texas. I think my chances are real good. It takes finding some good fish, and, and you got to find some good largemouth. The good largemouth seem to be the real key. I'm going to go look and, and hopefully find some. I don't really have very many fish to go to. Um, I have to put my trolling motor down and just go. And weighing in with a three-day total of 33 pounds, six ounces, from Cedar Park, Texas, the fishing man from Aggieland, Clark Quinlan. <laughs> and here's our last finalist. He's a 1998 Walmart FLW Tour champion on Wheeler Lake. This marks his eighth top 10 finish on the Walmart Tour. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is. I would dedicate tomorrow to my wife, Robin. She's out here with me, you know, all the time, and she takes care of me, makes my lunch, and makes the reservations, and drives. It makes me feel better when I have a bad day. So we've got a baby on the way, so I dedicate it to her for sure. I'm pleased with where my career is. It's come a long ways in the last three or four years. I'm 27 years old, and the uh, Lord's blessed me a lot. I've, I've, uh, I'm happy where I'm at, but I still 
would like to do better and get better, and I'm learning a lot every year. And he weighs in with a three-day total of 32 pounds, 14 ounces. He comes to us from Trustville, Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Randy Levelhead Howell. Well, Michael Buffer has set the stage, certainly, for an exciting day here in Northwest Arkansas. I'm Tommy Sanders. Jerry McInnes will be along in a minute, and we will be looking at shallow, shallow bass all day. As always, that salty final five have worked hard to be with us here on the final day. And let's look at a bit of their semifinal day before we turn them loose. God. He's hitting it, man. My heart's fluttering. I mean, just pounding. I'm not getting the right angle on the bait. I don't want to jerk him outside that log. As big as he is, he broke me off. A little bit more this way. Should take one good cast. Let it down in the bed. Stop it. Start shaking. Shake it right up to him. Keep shaking. There he is, dude. Easy now, he's a big one. Get him in the net. Right. Yeah, my man. I told you he's a big surprise. <laughs> now, boat 21 has fired a shot. <laughs> It's just so hard to tell. Pretty nice spot for Beaver Lake out here in Arkansas. Man. Go on with your bad self. Go on with your bad self. Well, on this third day of qualifying, we crowned our non-boater champion. That was Hoot Gibson. He achieved that honor with five pounds, 15 ounces of fish. Now, at that time, we still had 10 pros with us, and although a top 10 finish, that is quite a feat here in this tournament. We lost Rick Gassaway, Johnny McCombs, Gary Klein, Cody Bird, and Bill Smith on that wrap-up day. But that's the bad news. The good news is that Pack, Swindle, Winlet, Howell, and Strader have survived. Watching the $1 million Walmart Open. Now, this is one of the big three events out here during the season on the Walmart FLW Tour. It's one that the fishermen really point to. They really prepare for, not just because of the money. It's a, it's a beautiful lake, and most importantly, it's a prolific lake. The Game and Fish authorities say that there are 16 go. million spawning bass in this lake right now. Our five competitors are underway. They're just trying to catch five good ones. Jerry McKinnis is up in the air with one of them right now on what promises to be a perfect day for fishing. Well, Tommy, what a beautiful morning we have here starting on Beaver Reservoir. Has spectacular takeoff, and we're following Randy Howell down to Clifton Creek. Good morning, Randy. How are you doing today? I'm feeling good today, Jerry. Boy, you have to be one of the five happiest bass fishermen in the world right now. Well, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm just tickled to death to be going out this Walmart open today. It's kind of chilly this morning, though, but I, but I know that sun's coming out. We're going to have a good day. I know you've been on a lot of different lakes in a very young career. How does Beaver Lake rate with you? Man, Beaver Lake is awesome, Jerry. Anytime I can look in the water and see 10 foot deep and see bass swimming around, man, my nerves go bad because I, I love to catch them when I can see them. Yeah. Does it, uh, does it fit your style of fishing? It fits my style perfect, Gary. I love, I love sight fishing. We're a little bit late on the full moon, but we still have a lot of small bass on the bed. And that's going to be the key today. Somebody, hopefully me, finding a big fish and getting in the bite. That's going to be the winner today. What, what is there about Clifton Creek that, uh, that uh, it attracted you? Well, Clifton's got a whole lot more fish in it. It's got a lot of numbers in it. And I'm going there first because I'd like to get five before I start looking today. And I also saw a five-pounder in there yesterday, so I'm going to look for that first. 
Well, I know you well enough to know that you are going to have a good time today, regardless of what happens. Yeah, the good thing, Jerry, the Lord is in the Lord's hands today. That takes a lot of pressure off of me, so I'm going to I'm going to fish real hard and have a good time either way. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Randy Howell headed for the lower end of the lake. Clark Winlet right here working a very visible fish in about five feet of water with a white two. Now watch all this. We are going to get such a good education on this style of fishing today. But basically, these guys are dropping a plastic bait in the area of a large mouth, a small mouth, or a Kentucky bass's bed and making them mad enough to strike. Spot. He bited about uh, 20 times before it finally got caught. All right, that's the start, though. About a pound and a half. Well, as we roll back and watch again the sight that our anglers saw this morning, may we remind you that these professional anglers have worked so hard getting to this point in their careers. We hope you respect how much they prepare themselves, how knowledgeable they are about finding and catching fish, and most importantly, what good people they really are. Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Kenny Chesney, Greatest Hits, by Frito-Lay, Food for the Fun of It, by Kellogg's, the best to you each morning, and by Land O'Lakes, supporting family traditions. Oh, there's the big Look, can you see her right there? Look, see her swimming? Coming right in? That's a five-pounder. Son, look. She's coming to the trolling motor. Stand up here and you can you can you give her in camera look. It's right there. See that big one right there? See her black tail doing like that, going away? God, that's a monster. If I could catch her, I'd win this tournament. She's spooked though. She ain't on the bed yet. The male is right there. See the male on that white bed? See her turning around right now? I'm gonna catch him, and after I catch him, she might get up there and bite. You'll notice as we go along today that Randy Howell provides his own play-by-play. -play. Yeah, very we, entertaining. We don't have to work. He does a good job of it. He does. <laughs> hey, and Mark Pack is preparing himself for a cast a little bit later on in the day. He's probably got a fish underneath that brush pile there. He can't make a cast, so he's going to clean it out and catch him later. Go. And you know what, Tommy? Randy was talking about uh, uh, the male and the female Ooh. and so on. And what he meant there was that... When you catch the male, <laughs> you have a good chance of coming back and catching good. the female. He's got the male now. I'll take it to start with, dude. It's all about presentation. I had to move around to the right position before I could get the cast. It can be a good sight fisherman. You got to be able to practice the cast to make sure you can make good cast. So it's real important to make real accurate cast as quick as possible when you get the fish ready to bite. That's what happened that time. Once I got the cast where it needed to be, we bit it. Spotted bass are a lot more aggressive than a largemouth when they're on the bed. I don't know why, but but I appreciate that. You looking at it? I right, get back in there. I'm gonna catch this fish. Well, you can see him down there. He's hard to see, but you can see him pretty good. You can see that old black stripe. Of course, Mark has zeroed in on him. He's flipping in a little plastic bait, and he has got him. Wow. <laughs> nice little spotted bass, like Randy House said earlier there. A little more aggressive than the largemouth. Uh, he's got to stay persistent with him. You'll finally get him. You know, I think we featured Randy Howell and how fussy he is about the way he dresses, having his pants just right for fishing. In an earlier show, well, old level head, as Michael Buffer called him, he's the same way about that famous flat top. Bad, it's messed up. See, it's level usually, but it's usually real flat. All right, all right, it's bad looking right now. It's just pretty messed up. My hat matches it bad. Y'all are killing me, man. Uh, no, it ain't good. It is spring on Beaver Lake, and the fish are shallow. Boy, they are shallow, aren't they? 
And you know what? Old Gerald uh, has not fish this style very often he's kind of new to this and it's not yeah, easy Gerald, tommy you know just because you can see these fish doesn't Very mean small. that they're easy to catch sometimes they're a lot harder when you can see them he's just so deep you just can't see him good enough to know when he bites it you know like there he had it i was just about jerked and if i would have i'd have caught him Swindell may have very little experience at side fishing, but this guy's a different oh, story. Oh, boy, he's in the top ten, isn't he? Boy, he's one. All these guys from Texas are exceptionally good side fishermen. Clark may be the best there is, boy. All right. Another good spot. About a pound and three-quarter, probably. Man, those fish are beautiful. We're getting to see most of the bedding fish with our other anglers, but not so Clark. He's got some deeper beds going, doesn't he? He's actually fishing on these bluffy banks. Uh, the other guys are fishing in a lot shallow water. You know, Wesley Strader, as a matter of fact, is all the way up there at the end of the river. Wesley? Yeah. I was talking to Bud, your dad, a minute ago. He said the, the closest you ever got to the top 10 before was way back when at Kentucky Lake, and David Fritz knocked you out at the last, about the last fish to come in. So here's your chance to, to really bust on through, and you have. It's great to be in the top five, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's wonderful. I mean, it's a, it's a great feeling. Just to, it's, it's just a satisfaction of finally knowing that you've accomplished uh, one of your dreams. What do you call home? Kentucky Lake? No, uh, Wasbard Lake, but I go to Norris and Dale Holla, you know, when they're on the beds of those super clear lakes and, you know, practice a lot, you know, trying to figure out what really aggravates them. Well, what's worked for you this week? Well, a Lake Fork tube and a, a twitch worm, it's just, every fish has its own personality, and it's like right now I'm working on one about three pounds, and uh, I've thrown everything I've had in the boat at, and now I'm on a pink jig, and I just... It's a real catchable fish, but it's just, it, it just don't want to cooperate with me. Wesley, based on what you've seen so far today, what do you think the chances are of you finding a really big largemouth and being able to catch him sometime well, today? I've found a lot of them, but they just, uh, they're not working with me. I mean, every fish I'm pulling up on is close is to any three. Is chance they get better during the afternoon, or is it they pretty much, if they, won't, if they won't take it in the morning, they won't take it in the afternoon? Well, the, see, the thing is, we blasted off so early this morning. Those guys that are, that are uh, going down the lake, they got a better chance of seeing them. Whereas I had to lay off about an hour for the sun to get up so I can even be able to see them because I'm up the river. I'm doing, there's nobody up here with me doing what I'm doing. <laughs> he hit it so hard, he messed up it too. I, saw, I didn't know you were ready, that's why I didn't jerk there. You ready this time? Yeah. All right. You're ready again now, aren't you? Yes, sir. All right, I this, wasn't ready that time. I knew you weren't. Camera conscious. We'll get him here, though. He's pretty, uh, pretty ticked off at this point. Gosh, he's hitting that thing hard. He, he, you know what he's trying to, I mean, what he's doing is he's just hitting it really, but he doesn't go in his mouth. It's like he, I, I feel him hit it, but. He's biting so short, I'm gonna put on something really little. Maybe I can, uh... Maybe I can hook him. <laughs> now that's a spot. That red eye, that is, that is so neat. Clark Winlet certainly got to hone his uh, fish jerking technique there. All on one fish, and uh, Swindell's back on one himself. Come off. Dog it. Dang it. Now that hurt. He's sitting there again. 
Oh, I'm gonna catch him. Well, it takes all day, now it's a personal thing. It's the $1 million Walmart open here in northwest Arkansas on Beaver Lake. Part of the White River yeah. chain includes Table Rock and Bull Shoals. This is Wesley Strader from Spring City, Tennessee. And Wes is fishing a long way from our other anglers. As a matter of fact, you can tell by the watercolor, Tommy, that uh, uh, he's on a Come different on. lake, maybe. No, not really. He is at the upper end of uh, Beaver. Lord. He's fishing Fine. for largemouth. These largemouth are going to weigh a lot more than the little spots. But they've got to be 15 inches long. Right. That's Take the problem with fishing with the far the largemouth is you've got to catch small ones before you can get a keeper. But, boy, how about that one? He wants it moving instead of sitting. I see now what he wants. Mmm. That felt good. Oh, can y'all see him? We're about to bust him right here. Watch. He had to turn his head. He turns his head. I can't, he don't see it in time. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. That daggone fish, oh, it makes me mad. Oh, I nipped him that time. Got it. Come on, Lord, let me keep this one Boy. Yes, thank God. Man, that's a hard-headed rascal. In the top lip. All right, y'all did better than that while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Are these folks getting a show or not? Getting to watch Randy Howell do this sight fish? <laughs> this, is, this is great, though. Oh, I could follow Randy all day, couldn't you? Oh, absolutely. Oh, what do you think about Clark's attitude right now? How long have you been doing this kind of fishing, Randy? I've been doing it since I was about 12 years old, probably. Well, so he's, he's only 14 Yeah, now. so two years, that's not long <laughs> enough to learn how to bad fish. All right, now, I hear you. <laughs> you I like it, though. You like this kind of fish. Oh, I love it. I, live, I grew up on Lake Gaston in North Carolina. It's clear water lake, a lot of big, large mouth, and I used to go out after school every day. I quit playing baseball in the 10th grade so I could go fishing in the afternoons. <laughs> Can you catch any, any large mouth, big large mouth you see on the beds here, or just some of them uncatchable? Well... All the ones that have been really on the bed are catchable, but the ones that aren't really on the bed. This morning, I spent 30 minutes and caught a male because there's a six-pound female there. And I mean, it's a monster fish. I caught the male, and it wasn't even a 15-incher. And I took it out and released it. And I, the female was getting ready, getting ready up there, and all of a sudden, the male shows back up. Oh, uh, my goodness. Were well, you going to go back to that fish? Yeah, I've been back a couple times already, but he's uh, she's well, huge. Talk to us a little bit about the fish you're fishing on right now. Uh, uh, I, I think it's real interesting. Uh, uh, Randy, our, our viewers need to understand that these fish have personalities, and you can almost tell if it's a catchable fish or not. Is that right? That's right. This is kind of a Tommy Sanders fish right here. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, what does that mean? He's real friendly, standing around. He keeps standing here. He won't leave, and he's, <laughs> you know, talking to me, letting me know that he's interested in biting. <laughs> so, uh, We're going to have to catch our breath yeah, on that. Yeah, hold on. And say, oh, my goodness. I'm trying to hurry up and catch him, so we'll, we'll get him while you're talking to him. He's already looked at it a couple times. Now, when you got them really, like, passing over it again and again and again, you know they're interested, you know you want to bite. Is there some little move you put on that bait just to just to seal the deal, to make it happen? Yeah, it's a lot of different little things. It's really hard. It's the hardest thing in the world to explain. I've tried to help my yeah. partners every day to catch them like this, and you just got to know the way that fish is reacting. It's almost like... When he turns and looks at you, or looks at the bait, you gotta do a certain thing at a certain time. You gotta hop it just enough to aggravate him. And if you see him chase your bait, you know he don't want it on the bottom, so then you gotta kinda hop it by his face. I've caught two like that this morning. Are you throwing a tube at him? Throwing a what? Are you throwing a tube? No, nah, I'm rotating right now. I'm throwing this little bitty homemade finesse jig. And and are you, is the does the color make a whole lot of difference, or do you like a color that 
you can see real good. Well, I, I was talking about that this morning. Uh, the, the color that you can see helps you helps you to fish the, the bed better, but the fish usually don't bite the bait as fast in this clear water for some reason. I, something Everybody has their different opinion, but this week I've had a lot more success fishing more natural colored things, and it's harder for me to see the fish, but I'd rather, I mean, see the fish bite it, but I'd rather go for the feel and catch him 10 minutes quicker than to uh, use a bright bait yeah. and not be able to get him bite quick. Well, and don't you think a, uh, a Jerry McKinnis fish would be harder to catch than a Tommy Sanders? You got that right. I've, I've had two or three of them this morning. That six-pounder reminded me of you a whole lot. He just kind of <laughs> eased around. He wasn't in any rush. Just took his time. Really he just, just went not even paying around. attention? Yeah, that's sort of, yeah, that's sort of fish. Randy, I mean, it's been a few months, I'll say several months, since we've had you in a top ten here. And a, yeah. well, this is a good time to break through. You and Robin are expecting a, a child, and it's just a, what a terrific week to, to make a good showing. Man, yeah. this is an awesome week. Lord, I mean, Lord, he's blessed me so much this week, just making this cut, fishing the way I love to fish. And we got a baby on the way in August. And, uh, I mean, it this would just be perfect if I could win this tournament today. And I'm going to try as hard as I can, do everything I can, and, and if it... If it's meant to be and the Lord blesses me, lets me find one that's big and a bite, you know, I think I can do it. Because you don't ever know what it might take today. It could take a lot or it really might not take much. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing the same thing. So it's going to be an exciting way in. No doubt about that. From what we've seen today, from what we've seen all week, we know it's going to be it's a good way in a fun. tight one. And you know what? Looking from the scenery there, I think Clark is back on that same fish again. He has fooled around. And, and a lot of these guys just stay right after him till they get him. I didn't get that time. That's a good fish. I don't spot it bad. That's five. Walmart FLW Tour is being brought to you by Sitco. We know you. By Pepsi Cola, the joy of Pepsi. By Snickers Cruncher, hungry? Crunch this. And by Timex, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Walmart open here on Beaver Lake. We're checking out Randy Howell again. As you can see, he has found a fish right by that rock, just to the right of that rock. I learned to cast today. I'll be good, I tell you what. Oh, boy. You don't like that. Ooh, got a scale. Glad I didn't snag him. Got a little scale, see it? Just flick that off. I'll put that back on him in a second. I get him in here, I'll put that scale back on him. Save it for him. He went down on it. Here we go. Let's do a countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, 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 Moved it too far. I got to start doing side bets out there on how many casts it'll take. <laughs> Get some money going out here. Here we go. There he is. That's number four. Thank you, Lord. Top. Where Mark Pack is positioned right now, we really can't see the fish, but there's one down there just like the one Randy Howell was shooting for, and there he is. See, and you, you'll notice that these guys always point out to you where, where the fish was just caught, uh, and that is to prove that they have not snagged this fish. They want everybody to know that they have caught it legally. Well, now, look at that. <laughs> Man. Little guys, that's this year's model, I think, of, of Red Fox. And that that's tougher to do than see one of these fish in it, it Tommy. Indeed. <laughs> Gerald Swindell is such a quiet, subdued, calm individual, isn't he? <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> got him, son. <laughs> Third time you come, but I got him. Man. That's what I needed. When I lose one, it's like at the end of the battle till I catch him, and now that my confidence is back where it ought to be. 
I lost him three times. It was my third time. Just barely right. gets excited there. Gerald Swindle of Alabama. You know we had a list going around a while back. The most stressful jobs in America, <laughs> believe it or not, professional <laughs> bass angler was one of them right there in the top 10 or 15. But right near the very top was college basketball coach. And believe it or not, we've had one of those in the field this week as well. Fishing on the co-angler side, assistant to Nolan Richardson, Brad Dunn of the University of Arkansas. You know how to tell when you're a bad golfer? How's that? When you're on the golf course and people walk up to you and ask you if the fish are biting. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably right. See, I really like it. Now, I have a good time. What limited time I get to go fishing, I have a good time fishing. It's kind of nice to get away sometimes. I don't think with the stress in my job that that you can that you can do it 24 7 52 in recruiting i'm dealing with an 18 year old client okay and those guys out there fishing right now are determining whether these fish are going to bite off the bed okay so yesterday i'm sitting there fishing on a bed and fishing looking at the fish and i'm going you know what this is not real easy either one of the things that separates the pros in fishing from the amateurs, it separates a great basketball player from just a so-so player, is the ability to adjust to what the people are doing to you. In basketball, if somebody shows you a particular defense or a particular offense, and you've got to make adjustments so you can win the game. I think in fishing, you've got to make adjustments. OK, I knew that these fish were here, and it was a bright, bright bluebird day. And now we got cloudy, and we got windy, and it's it's warmer and things have changed and you better be able to adjust to that or you can end up with no sack of fish <laughs> yeah yeah i got big aspirations to turn pro are you nuts i can't be doing that <laughs> <laughs> found your hiding place didn't the house found your hiding place this is the cast i'm calling it boys Gerald says he's going to catch one on this cast. It's not really hard no. to find their hiding place. Here. Look look here. Right in the middle of my circle is that bed. Look how bright that sticks out. That is where the fish has gone in there and actually cleaned that up. You couldn't see the fish on it there. Uh, you could see the bed pretty good, but uh, Gerald had, had a pretty good view at him, I guess. Dropped the bait in the right place, and boy, they are so catchable when they're in that position. That's a good spot. It's the Walmart open on Beaver Lake in northwest Arkansas. We're catching spawning fish, and the spawning all happens on the beds. And we are looking at a bed, Tommy. Look how, how clear this area is all around here. That fish has got in there with his tail and cleaned that up, and that's the spot that sticks out so much. Uh, when the when the fisherman is actually looking for this spot, and look, this little guy right here, well, he gets out of our view every now and then. He's right in there. And now he's gone. He leaves that bed. Here he is. Here he is, right here. He will leave that bed, but he won't go very far, and he will finally wander back. Clark Winlet with a big fish, big in a lot of ways. That's a largemouth, right? Boy, and that'll make a difference, too. Good deal. Man, that's just almost relief after spending two hours on those other ones. That's a good three-pounder. Mmm. Good deal. Right now, this is the critical time. You see him, you know, I wish you could see. He's making, making real... Uh, nervous rotations in the bed without really running away from the bed. That's when you know you can catch him because you're really bothering him when you're doing that, when you see him doing that. Okay. Ner nervous rotations. That's you. Nervous rotation. That is, that I is guess that you. is me. I do a lot of nervous <laughs> rotations during a tournament week. Who let them dogs out? We're fishing to fire this bad boy up. <laughs> Don't 
Another one on there for Swindle. We thought it might turn out this way today, and so it has. The race is so very tight with Gerald Swindle here, Clark Winlet, Randy Howe, maybe separating themselves Booyah! from the other two. Straighter and packed just a little dog. bit. <sighs> Talk to Puffin now. <laughs> it's coming around now, boys. It's time to dance. Oh, thank you, Lord. Ah, it don't get any better. I've never been it, never seen it. I'll never live it. Boom! That's what I need right there. Ashley Strader with another one. He hasn't caught many fish today, but the ones he has caught have been good ones. Hey, remember last year the, the tournament was won at this end of the lake, and there just seems to be uh, a better bunch of largemouth up there, and he doesn't have to have as many strikes as the other guys. If he can catch keep catching them 15-inch uh, or better, you know they're going to weigh pretty good. Hey, and Tommy, do you realize, um, what, a, a month ago we was over on Lake Martin, Fishing in 30 feet of water with drop shot rigs. <laughs> Two or three of these guys are using drop shot rigs on these shallow fish. On the shallow fish. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Wesley catching up with that good one there. Let's check back in now on Gerald Swindle. It's just a matter of principle. Hey, you're normally not a, uh, a sight fisherman, are you? No, nah, guys, I really not. I, I spent all spring so far trying to become a better sight fisherman. I even took a lot of information from Gary Klein and Timmy Horton. Both of those guys lend me a lot of knowledge that they've shared with me and uh you know i just been working on it you, you can hone your skills at fishing just like you can shooting three pointers in basketball and i've had all intentions of becoming a better sight fisherman but i don't proclaim to be a good one yet boy you you're a tiger with a spinner bait i remember when you won that tournament everyone was sight fishing except you throwing a spinner bait well that's something i you know I, i'm more of an aggressive type fisherman i really get psyched up and i fish real fast and you know that that's right up my alley but you know this bed fishing Things kind of exciting too now. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to like it. <laughs> yeah. You talked a little bit yesterday, Gerald, about uh, you know having to, to work on your skills, but you also talked about working on the mental side of your game. What do you do to, to become a smarter fisherman, to become a more patient and a more effective mentally fisherman? I think you have to, you know, you spend some time out on the water by yourself trying to catch these fish, and you uh, you work on on staying there, achieving the confidence, uh, not leaving on a bass till you catch him and uh that's a big thing you know and then i did guys i've spent all fall uh last winter after my surgeries and this spring so far and i'm trying to train hard physically so you keep your stamina up so you know i notice the better i feel that you know my mental game becomes a lot better i don't seem to get as tired i don't you don't make bad decisions what uh if you don't mind us asking what kind of surgery did you have we didn't know about that yeah, last year, right before the FLW championship, I had two major back surgeries. I had one in May and one in August. So when I actually fished the championship, I was only about, I think, six weeks off the operating table off my second surgery, which made, you know, four overall back surgeries. So I've had to really be careful, you know, and I've tried hard to get back in physical shape to come out here because I don't care what anybody says. This is the most physical and demanding sport I've ever been involved in, and I've played it all from any kind of thing you can imagine. And this right here takes more out of me physically than anything, so. Have you got a look at your big fish yet? Are you there yet? I'm easing in here, so if I start whispering, y'all know I'm looking at you. <laughs> How much time are you willing to spend on this fish today? If he'll stay here, I'll spend the rest of the day. The rest oh of the day? God. Wow. Good luck, Gerald. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you. Cull still with a, with a two pounder, but that's only gonna help me five or six ounces, so it's a game of ounces right now. So you need a, at least a two pounder. Yeah, I need a, I really need to find a three plus pounder is what I'm looking. I'm gonna look real fast right here. See if there's a big one behind the dog or anything. We're going to let Randy look, but right now Clark Winlet is working the one that would help his situation immensely. And, Tommy, this is kind of off the subject a little bit, but uh, speaking of Clark Winlet, he's from College Station, Texas. His, 
Is College Station a hotbed for hockey or something down there? <laughs> Not that I know of. He, man, is, he is wild Mr. Hockey. about hockey, isn't he? Oh, especially the Dallas uh, the Dallas Stars. He's all over that. <laughs> right now, he's not too interested in it, though. Boy, he's got a dandy large mouth oh, on here. That's a good here. one there. And I hope everybody knows that it doesn't happen as fast as we're showing it to you. Sometimes it takes them two hours to catch one of these fish. Another nice one. They figure out which rod I want to use. Man of many rods. It's a small mouth. Dang, it's a pretty small mouth. Look at that. Let me get up here and get it. Look at that pretty small mouth. Dang, I didn't know that was a small mouth. That was pretty neat. that cost me this tournament. And for the standing room only crowd in attendance and the millions watching all across America, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! The Walmart FLW Tour is brought to you by Coleman, the outdoor recreation company. By Black & Decker, proud sponsor of the Walmart FLW Tour. By Energizer, the power to keep going and going. And by Everstart Batteries, more power for your money. Boy, what a big day we have had here in Rogers, Arkansas. Mark Peck. Wesley Strader and Randy Howell did a great job today, but this has come down to Clark Windlett and Gerald Swindell. One of them is going to be a very happy fisherman. Two left contesting the championship at the 2001 Walmart Open. Gerald Swindell, your leader so far, 10 pounds, 11 ounces. Yesterday, that's exactly the total that Clark Windlett caught. I hope, I pray that that's not the total he caught today. Clark Winlet has weighed in three fish so far. He needs two pounds, eight ounces, is it, Charlie, in order two to take... Nine. Two nine. Two nine. No, two, you know, two nine, three nine, excuse me, Tommy. Three pounds, nine ounces. Oh, that's right, needs three, three pounds, nine. nine. Okay. We'll put him $200,000 for the second time here in the Walmart right. Open. Three pounds, nine ounces. Less than that, another repeat champion here. Remember, he's weighed in three fish so far. He's reaching the line, Will. See if he's got a limit. Y'all got me over where I can't see. I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Three nine. Don't run off. I'm nervous as I could possibly be right now. 99 champion of the four, of the Walmart Open, Clark Winlet. This will be fish number he's losing four. Water. All right, let's stop right there. Let's get the weight of this one here. This is his fourth fish. He needs three nine to three win nine thousand dollars. This fish weighs one pound thirteen ounces. Now let's see his limit fish. <laughs> Looking for three nine total. 
Miss Cheryl. Just keep standing here like you do me now. No? <laughs> as long as they keep flopping, we have to. Two fish for Clark Winlet. Four pounds, six ounces. Clark Winlet is your champion. How about that? incredible feeling in it it's unbelievable I, I i thought about it today while i was sitting out there and really when i was driving back today i almost started crying in the boat you know the my favorite way to fish in the world is is to sight fish and and everybody knows that everybody knows i'm going to come here and do it and and uh to get to the top five and have a chance to to win a tournament a two hundred thousand dollar tournament is just it's really overwhelming and and uh, i lost about a four pounder a day that i really thought cost me the tournament i, I didn't think i was going to win and and, uh, but it's worked out. The Lord's blessed me very much. I've got strong support with my family, and, and uh, the fans are awesome. I, I thank everybody here. If Clark hadn't won this event, we couldn't have used this shot as our Fuji flashback, but he did, so we will. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.